Okay, awesome. Looks like we are live. Yep. Just doing some adjustments here. Hello and welcome everybody um, to a bit of an impromptu interview with um, Regina Curtis, um, a co-author of Mystics Revealed. And um, the reason why um, I'm doing a series of interviews with the co-authors today is because we have, yay! yay! <laughs> Physical yes. copies. <laughs> yes, physical copies, paperback, and also hardcover if anyone's interested in, I mean, there's nothing like great holding a book. I don't know. But, oh, yeah. It brings but it, I, it brings it to life. <laughs> it does. And I am such a like hand book holding, like I love physical books. So um, I'm going through and reading all the chapters again, even though, you know, obviously I've, I've read them, <laughs> but it's, it's something and I'm highlighting and yeah, all of that yeah. good stuff. So, um, and I have a whole stack behind me, but, um, and, oh, I didn't put it, I will put it um, for anyone who is interested in buying um, a paperback or hardcover copy of Mystics Revealed. I'll go ahead and put the link um, in Amazon. But if you're like, Oh my gosh, I just want to do it right now because I'm thinking about it. Just go to Amazon, <laughs> Google, uh, put in Mystics Revealed in the search bar. It'll come up and you'll have a chance to purchase it. And once you do, please leave a review. Um, yeah. Absolutely, you know, take it your biggest takeaway or um, your favorite chapter or whatever it is. Um, we love your feedback. So anyways, I am joined here with Regina Curtis today and um we are, I just, I'm, we're really just going to be discussing um, Regina's business. We're going to be talking about the book collaboration. We're going to be talking about future plans. We're just kind of having a whole conversation here um, about Regina, her business, the project, all of those things. So welcome, Regina. Beautiful. Thank you for having me in this conversation. I love talking about all of those things. So I know, um, and you're so good at it. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So um, I don't, I introduce you, yourself a little bit and your business. Sure. So anyone who's um, maybe new to you here um, has a chance to kind of get to know you and what you do in the world. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Regina Curtis. My um, company name is at Matri, and it's a combination of two Sanskrit words that essentially mean a journey towards kindness to your soul. And I work a lot with the concept of soul wisdom and soul languages. So what those are, are our authentic ways of knowing or receiving information and being or how we express that information. And that can be in the ways that we create, it can be in our relationships, it can be in the business um, that we do, especially as a solopreneur. That's a term that I use for soul guided entrepreneurs. And that is the majority of the people that I work with. Okay, perfect. Such good work that you're doing such important work. And, um, and Regina and I were talking a bit because that's what we tend to do <laughs> before <laughs> this. And I'm like, okay, we really have to get started. Um, <laughs> and we were just talking um, about this new energy and collective community and feminine leadership, right? Yeah. And um, I think you're such a empowering model for what that can look like. Um, and super compassionate. We just, every time I, 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 I talk with you, Regina, I always come away feeling like a warm hug, like on my soul. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it's, it's so amazing. Um, so definitely check out Regina's work. I'll link up to, um, her stuff in the, um, in this video as well. Um, so, Let's talk about the book Mystics Revealed, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so you had con you had already contributed to another book, right? Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that and kind of what made you decide to jump on board with this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the first book that I contributed to was called Creativity is Whatever You Want It to Be, which is where we actually met. And the um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the reason why I decided to join that book because it really helps build the story of why I decided to join in this book. Um, 
so what I was looking for at that point point when I decided to contribute to the first book was uh, collaboration, right? I wanted to find others who were really working in similar spheres as I am um, that I could connect with both for my business in the sense of, you know, this could bring me more clients, this could bring me more collaborators, this could bring me more visibility, all of those things that as a business owner, even a solopreneur, we still are running a business, right? There's still a business aspect to it. But the difference, the big difference for me is that the way you're doing it, the intention of what you're doing and what is guiding you really is aligned with you as a person with your soul mission here. And so creativity is something that's huge for me. It is one of my soul languages. I am an intuitive artist. I'm an art channel. Um, we can talk about what the difference between those things is, but essentially I speak the language of art, right? Mm -hmm. I speak the language of color. I speak the language of vibrancy, um, of sound even. Like sometimes I'll look at a color and I can hear a sound with it. Um, so this is something that I was really exploring for myself and bringing into the forefront of the work that I was doing. Um, and so when that came about, I thought it was a great opportunity to connect. It was a wonderful experience. It was more than I ever imagined. It was far more than uh, a marketing you know, scheme or it was, um, it really was a full experience. And so when you and I met, I really had um, been playing around with kind of bringing forth my my experience or my, um, my lens of what mystic means, what mysticism means, what mystery means, um, and kind of healing that uh, old story that I have learned, that I have lived in other lifetimes for sure, that is written into my lineage and into our collective lineage, and really coming to a place of peace and contentment, not contentment as in like, okay, I'm fine with everything that happened and it's all good, but really being content as in being in alignment with what that means for me and both how it has affected or influenced where I am today and who I am today, as well as how I can empower myself within that sphere and become um, really a beacon for others who are, are exploring and experiencing the same. Absolutely. And you're so good at that. And I think um, it kind of brings me back, um, you know, to the idea of mystics and how sometimes this word, um, there's, there's some preconceived notions about what what it means to be a mystic, right? Or yeah. um, uh, it just seems like there's maybe some ne negative condemnations, especially <laughs> definitely um, so negative. Yes. Yeah. And so what does it mean to you? Like, what does the word mystic mean to you? It means an opportunity for curiosity, right? It means an opportunity for learning, um, for reflection, for play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the same word, the same root mystic is a part of mystery, right? Um, as well as mysticism. And how many of us have ever read a mystery novel or, you know, fell in love with Sherlock Holmes or um, what's her name? Um, Nancy Drew, right? Or the Hardy Boys. I didn't, never read the Hardy Boys, so I can't really use that as an exploration explanation. But um, like, there is this sense of mystery that is fun, right? That is like, oh, okay, let's let's go explore, let's go on an adventure. Mm -hmm. And then there is this kind of underlying theme, this thread that has been woven into much of our cultural experiences with mystery that implies that there is danger. Mm. And um, 
there can be, right? And often that danger though is perceived danger. Like I think of Scooby-Doo and um, (laughs) when you think of Scooby-Doo, it's like, okay, they go on this adventure and they uncover all these things. And what it at first appears is that there are these monsters and ghosts and, you know, all these things. And then when they reveal at the end, it's like, oh, there was somebody who was hurt, mad, wounded in some way. They were, you know, upset about something and they were trying to get revenge on someone else or make someone else's experience difficult and challenging and scary because they were, it was a reflection of what was happening internally. Right. And so I'm not saying there's never any actual physical danger when you, you know, dive into a mystery. Um, But a lot of the experiences that we have, it really is on an emotional level, on an energetic level. Um, not to say we can't feel that in our bodies, right? Because we absolutely can. Oh my gosh, but, we totally do. <laughs> Trust <yeah>. me. <laughs> absolutely do. Um, but when we can hold that adventure in a space of curiosity and do it with a sense of playfulness and with compassion and with, you know, um, kind of a gentleness, then it really can become a very nourishing and joy filled experience as we also kind of move through those heavier things. I Um, I love the idea of the, the curiosity and playfulness in, you know, a lot of it is self-reflecting, right? How, how the world is showing up for us, how we are showing up for the world, what we're attracting, what our realities are looking like based on our thoughts, feelings, um, you know, all of those things. And, um, oh, I think for me, if I had to put like a a single word, like a couple Mm -hmm. or a single word on, on what mystics means is curiosity is such a good one. And I think just to connect with that is really a deep, uh, self-reflection and a deep knowing of Mm -hmm. who we are. Um, yeah. Because when we start un- unlayering, um, unraveling some of these layers and going to deep in, and a lot of times it's just about asking questions, asking the right questions, right? Um, I yeah. know Charlotte um, talks about that in her chapter about asking the right questions. Um, and so sometimes when we start asking these questions, it's following that nugget. It almost reminds me of like um, uh, one of those choose your own adventure um, books, yes, you know, that, we that. To read when we were kids and it's like, okay, go to this page if you want to go on this yeah. adventure. And um, it's, it's kind of like that. You're just following this thread. And so for anyone who is here, I would invite you to, you know, kind of question maybe if you do feel some negativity around the word mystic, maybe just ask yourself what, why is that? Is that your, is that, is it a fear that's maybe coming from yourself? Is it something that's coming from maybe something outside of you that was told to you? And have you come to your own conclusion about this word? In other words, too, I think it's so important for us um, to create our own meaning around what these things are telling us, right? So definitely. There's been a huge um, emphasis for me over the last couple of years on language and mm-hmm. how I interact with language and even reframing or re, re, um, purposing language in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the words that was uh, coming up for me, even just in the last couple of days, was inevitably. And, um, so I think this was, uh, I'll explain what my kind of idea around this and my reframing of this word is to why it relates, but, um, I tend to pull words apart and explore them in pieces. And (laughs) (laughs) I've noticed this about you. Yes, (laughs) I I do. Yeah. It's, um, it's just some, it's, it's, again, it's a, one of my ways of being, right. It's one of my ways of understanding the world. And do I always use a definition? Like, do I go to the dictionary and look words up? Sometimes I do, but a lot of times I'm really feeling into like, what does this word mean for me? And what is it reflecting for me? Hmm. And so inevitability, um, the way that I look at that is um, it was coming up because of a trigger that something I was 
really kind of thinking through and feeling into what is it that I want to release right now? Like what is feeling heavy in my body? What is feeling heavy in my experience? And the word inevitability came up and that can mean a lot of different things, but Mm -hmm. for the purposes of what I was, you know, thinking about it with is either health things or um, kind of outcomes of situations, right? Because there is, well, I'll explain what I, what I saw with this. So evitable, right? So inevitable. So there's kind of three parts that pull apart for me in evit ability, right? Mm -hmm. So when we put the evidence in the middle and we allow it to be, we give it the ability to be in this loop, right? It, it holds the experience of evidence or our version of evidence. Mm -hmm. It kind of holds it into this loop of inevitability, Mm. right? Do you see what I'm, what I'm saying? So So we're almost creating our own inevitably in by right. right. We're kind of getting, we're in our own preconceived ideas about what might happen. We're getting in this loop Hmm. in that loop. Right. And that becomes a thought pattern, right? That's the pattern where that comes in. If you think of it like a record, right. It, it starts to create this groove of the story that continues to go around and that gets sewn into or woven into our subconscious and it keeps repeating and it magnifies. And so if our belief system is built by allowing the evidence that we've already seen in other cases, maybe that's our family members, maybe that's something we've seen on, you know, on the news or even in a Mm -hmm. personal lived experience, if we allow that to be the, if we give it the ability to just stay in the center of our experience, then we're planting that seed, right? We're creating that space of inevitability for that to come into our life. And we're attracting that and magnifying it. Mm, That was a powerful realization, huh? And I love how you like (laughs) it down. So what did you do then to, what do we do when we find ourselves getting stuck in that inevitably inevitable cycle? Yeah. So this is where I think we can empower ourselves, right? And this is where I think that idea of mysticism comes in really powerfully because um, if what is magic, right? Magic is something that happens outside of our ability to see it, whether you call that alchemy whether that you call that um, magic, whether you call that uh, the void, right? Like there's always this kind of unseen space Mm -hmm. that we can't always see the, all of the things. I think you could also call it faith, right? You could call it faith. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, So where something transforms in your physical experience into another form or experience, but you don't see the process in which it happens. Yes. Right. So there you were here. And now you're here and you don't exactly know how you ended up over here, but you know, you feel, you sense, you, you You just experience a change that there is probably more that than what we were able to um, perceive. with Yes, absolutely. So there's some level, right. Of this kind of unknown or the mystery or the, you know, the, um, the change occurs in some way. And it's like, you know, the, the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and comes out a butterfly. Well, a lot goes on inside that chrysalis. And (laughs) we, from the outside, see it as magical, right? Like, oh, this is beautiful. This is magical. Well, what's happening inside of that chrysalis is not always really so magical. You know, there's a lot of it, everything breaks down, everything like literally transforms and changes. And it probably is painful in a lot of ways. Right. Um, it's, gooey. and then there's a, you're like, literally the caterpillar is literally turning into this gooey mess, you know? Right. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. And so, yeah, I feel a little bit like a, a caterpillar in a cocoon these days in ways. So yeah. I can relate to that. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's like, and there are all these layers. I mean, I could go into that metaphor for hours, but um, you really are like sustaining yourself on the version of yourself that was the past, right? Mm-hmm. Like the caterpillar actually eats 
its own yeah. flesh at times, you know, like in order to rebuild and become this thing. And then there's a struggle to get out because it needs that struggle in order to be able to um, get the blood into its wings and to be able to fly. And so mm -hmm. there's this whole process of transformation. Now that happens when, if you look at alchemy, right? Like if you turn one substance into another substance, there's also like, there's a homogenization or there's some kind of chemical reaction that's happening that's transforming one thing into another, right? That's magic. That's what magic is. Whether yeah. it is someone behind a curtain, like taking one thing and hiding it and pulling out another thing and they do it really skillfully and quickly. And then what happens is, oh, wow, now you see something else. You can experience that in a lot of different ways. You can experience it with play and curiosity and allow there to be some mystery in it, right? And enjoy that mystery because maybe it's fun to see, oh, that was fun. That entertained me. I enjoyed that. Right. right. Or yes. you can get really scientific about it and be like, I want to know how you did that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that also might be enjoyment for you. Mm -hmm. That yeah. for some people might be the enjoyment or wanting to replicate that. But that experience is different for everyone. Cool. So back to your question of how, what do you do right with that inevitability? When you see yourself stuck in that, you can use the power of magic, right? Of mystery, mm. of mysticism, of curiosity to help you transform and to empower your conscious mind to go in and find the things that are happening, those stories, right? That you've, that are allowed to the kind of run you're through on. your subconscious yep. mind, right? Mm -hmm. To bring those forward into your conscious mind and combine them with intention. And that is what alchemizes that experience, right? Like, okay, I recognize, I'm, I recognize this pattern that has happened. I see it. I have compassion for myself. I have compassion for the experience that has happened before. And I also have hope and um, faith Desire. that I can transform this, right? And it happens right now. It happens in the moment right now. And it happens every time I take a step towards that same thing. I recognize it again. I take another step. I recognize it again. I take another step, yeah. keeping to move myself in that direction and keeping that compassion for both the experience of it coming up again and all that has come before it. Oh my gosh. There's so much here and so much to unpack literally like, and, um, so one thing that was coming in for me, and I think something that some people, it, it's kind of an invitation for anyone who's watching that. Um, how do I want to say this? It's an invitation to understand that sometimes that magic kind of like that caterpillar, it can be really uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, at moments. And that a lot of times there is disruption that has to happen um, at, to some level, to some degree, to move past that loop of mm -hmm. staying stuck. So um, for example, I felt like I was stuck um, in a loop and I, I really was stuck in a loop for a long time. And I was mm -hmm. making like little tiny, you know, mm -hmm. momentum. And then it just felt like I was just trying so hard. And it was just like moving against the heavy water. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of times things have to feel it's, it's that idea that things have to sometimes feel a bit uncertain, a bit like you're free falling to get to a new level of awareness. It's just part of the process and something that I don't know if very many people really talk about. So people aren't really prepared when it happens. They're like, oh my gosh, everything's out of whack, nothing. And it's like, that means you're literally in the cocoon probably. <laughs> so, um, you're, you're, you're on the right path of transformation and be curious about where you're going to end up on the other end. Cause you just, it's, it's, you yeah. know, that's the kind of the fun and the mystery of it. So, um, so how, tell me a little bit about like your kind of first steps into soul, being a solopreneur and what, kind of what was your curiosities um, about mm -hmm. that and kind of how did you get started on the road that you're on now? 
Well, one of my favorite games to play when I was a child was to play office. Um, and so I also played teacher, you know, played school a lot. It didn't matter if I was the teacher or someone else was. My older sister used to set up like summer camps for us in the summer. And um, I just, I love learning, right? And I also um, really have always had this drive to do things in the way that I understand them to be true. And that doesn't mean that everyone else's way is wrong. It just means that I know that I'm going to be most effective, most efficient when I do them in the ways that are true to me. Okay. I want to, I want to pause there for a minute because I think it's so, it's so important and so valuable because what you're saying is that finding what is we live in this incredible time for one thing and not to say that people didn't have these opportunities to find what worked for them in the past but in this moment in time there is infinite possibilities of what you know this can look like for us right Mm -hmm. um and so was that just an innate kind of desire for you almost like a stubbornness to just keep going very stubborn. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a, um, I think stubborn is exactly the right word for it because I fought it very, uh, vehemently for a long time. And, um, I think one of the things that is also true for me is that I have the ability to find the magic or find the value in any and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And that can be a little bit overwhelming at times. Like I could, Um, you know, one of the gifts that I have, I could look around this room and I could use it to, you know, tell the story of your life because whatever it is that I am looking at and and finding that, um, awareness around whatever's calling to me is going to be reflective of whatever is important to come through. And that's wonderful, but it also can like really be overwhelming. So I found value in every single career move that I took. Mm -hmm. I found value in every Mm -hmm. educational pathway I took. And I am a well, I say this often and I truly mean it. I'm a well-traveled soul wisdom explorer, right? Like Mm -hmm. I have been exploring in the depths of soul wisdom since the day I came out of the womb. Like it is just I just feel like this is like two invitations for anyone who's listening who maybe feels like a couple ways. Maybe someone feels like uh, they're just doing it the traditional way or the way that society has told them and it doesn't feel great to them right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe um, it's someone who has has a desire to just do it their way too. They know that there's more expression that can come through when they decide to live authentically for them. To me, what you're saying is this two really, really impactful statements, which is you have the permission (laughs) if you needed it. Um, I know Regina and I don't feel like you need permission, but you might need this permission right now. And I hope that at some point you are going to be able to give yourself the permission. Um, You have permission to change your mind, to shift courses, to make a different career choice, to follow Mm. that curiosity, to do the thing that's been on your heart, even though it doesn't make sense. A lot of times Mm. the things that don't make sense, the things that are like, that doesn't even, why, why does it, why (laughs) this are going to give you the most rewarding experiences in some capacity. So you, this is your invitation to explore that first off. And second off, this is also an invitation for you to say, am I doing this because this is how I've always been told to do it? Am I doing this because this is what feels good? It's okay to do things Mm -hmm. the way that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. And well, there's wisdom in that too. Yes. Yes, there is. And Mm -hmm. so just asking those questions, like what, why am I on this path? And does this feel good to me? This is your invitation to, you can change your mind. You can start getting curious. You, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to explore, um, your own personal, um, journey 
And Mm -hmm. sometimes it looks like entrepreneurship. Sometimes it looks like a side business. Sometimes it looks like just an interest, a curiosity, a learning. There's so many different ways. And I think the, it's such an important thing is that you don't put that to deaf ears, be curious, be wildly curious about the things that you're curious about and and do it with enthusiasm without caring what other people think about it. If you can give yourself that one gift, then you'll be like, it'll be. It's transformative for sure. Um, Permission is one of the words that I I had to reframe for myself um, and stop thinking about it as somebody else giving me like a permission slip, right? Somebody else approving of what I do. And when I realized that um, for me, what that really means, what it, the way that it sits as truth for me is per mission, per my soul mission, right? Mm -hmm. So when I give myself permission, that means that I am aligning with my soul mission, with Mm -hmm. my ways of knowing and being. And that's how I give myself permission. It's not about giving myself the the outward or the value. Yes. 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 Yeah. It really has. I love this so much. And I think, um, I just kind of want to end on this topic because it's something that you and I both feel, um, really, really, um, passionate about, I think. And that is the idea of allowing people to find their own way and giving them support to facilitate Mm -hmm. that. And that's something that you do a lot in your work. I know that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I'm, I'm a little sad because we're ending on this and what I really wanted to talk about is the lineage part about your story, um, and how your grandmother came to you. So, um, that might have to come for another day, but definitely anyone who's watching, um, you know, check out, um, Regina's chapter. Um, and it is chapter three encounters with strangers leaning into safe it, learning. It's safe to be me, which mm-hmm. is perfect <laughs> segue for what we're talking about right now, yeah. which is the idea that the, <laughs> the conditioning that we have received is very much about someone knows better than us we need to always ask someone else. And, um, this has been something that I have, um, it's, it's definitely a progression. It's not something that happens overnight, but, um, I have really been playing into what does that mean? When Mm -hmm. is it necessary to bring in a mentor and when is it, um, really, really valuable to just listen to ourselves? So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And I think that actually what, Um, I shared in my chapter is the embodiment of that, right? It's the journey that I took in order to reach that conclusion. So one of the things that really um, is a pillar for the work that I do is that when you become fluent in the wisdom of your soul languages, right? When you really get into that um, conscious communication with the wisdom of your ways of knowing and being, then you create, you are in relationship with, you are, um, you are in business in a way with confidence and clarity because you are doing it from that place of soul wisdom, right? And so um, there are many ways that you can utilize that and teachers and collaborators, et cetera, are one of those ways. It's when you allow yourself to let that wisdom guide you to the teachers that serve you, right? That mm. that really are in sync, in harmony with your ways of knowing and being to be there when they need to be there so that you can reflect what their, what their experience is, you know, alchemize that in, and integrate it with your own experience and know when it's also time to keep moving, right? So mm. It's the difference between the sage on the stage, right? Or the, the guru or the, yeah. um, that, that external validation in whatever way that it is, of course, you're going to meet others who are going to teach you and who are going to be leaders and who are going to help you transform. Mm-hmm. It's the, di- the difference is that you're not going to this one thing as the end all be all thing that's going to me. give you permission. Change that's my going life. To fix you. I will follow you even if it doesn't feel right. Right. Yeah. Because what's the common denominator in all of those things? Fix me. 
right? Lead me. All Mm -hmm. of it is bringing it back to you and to your journey. So go into those with awareness that other people have lots of gifts to share with you and know that it's a, a holistic experience, right? Whole. It's all, all important. All of it is. And so you might take some deep dives into different areas. Um, You might have encounters with strangers, right? That last maybe minutes or seconds even that are hugely impactful. And other things, other times you might have experiences like the one with my grandmother, who that is a relationship that has transcended my lifetime and her lifetime, right? Even now we're still in communication with each other much, many years after she's passed away in this life. Um, Yeah. So it's, it's all a matter of bringing in that awareness and allowing that to be uh, what is informing you and uh, influencing you throughout your journey. And so when someone comes to you, are you going to kind of provide them with different kinds of maybe um, tools and resources that they get to try on um, in a way, like someone who's maybe never really, Mm -hmm. they're interested in like connecting with their own intuition. They really want to be able to become their own inner compass. Um, What what does that look like for them? They've never really experienced much of it before, Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're curious now. And and so what would that look like um, when, if they came to you and were working with you? So one of the hardest things for me and my business is explaining um, what that looks like, because it's truly an individual experience. Um, I, work very collaboratively. So meaning that when you come to work with me, we are going to work together. Like we're, we're going to be in a conversation. We are going to, um, find the, the tools, the techniques, the teachers, and we're going to explore those together. Right. So I, uh, use my my gifts, my ways of knowing to help tune into the language of your soul wisdom and interpret that for you until you become fluent in that language. Um, even if you already have some fluency in the in those languages, sure. we can still come together and I can be that compassionate mirror for you to help you find those and go on that exploration, right? It's it's a um, a bridge. I almost feel like you're like, this yeah. bridge. and I feel like, um, and, and, and you're absolutely right. There's a lot of people who have probably, probably most your clients have already come to some kind of personal yes. transformation, have already been on this journey for a little while and they are wanting to go deeper. Um, they are wanting to, you know, they, they maybe have felt a little wobble and are wanting to like, just expand what, um, their understanding is. So I I think that's a really important point too. So wherever they are, you meet them there and, um, and then provide like the tools, resources, this bridge. And I think this is one other important, really, really important thing about, um, working with someone who is holding space for your transformation. It's, this can be um, a bit of a lonely and it sometimes is a painful experience when you're experiencing Mm -hmm. a lot of growth, because there's a lot of things that you have to leave behind. There's, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening. And I can't really say enough about the benefit of having someone there with you, holding that space alongside you. It's like, it just gives you this where you're not just going to be like, I'm done. I'm scared. I'm going to go run under the bed and hide. This is too much for me. Cause it can feel that way at sometimes I don't want to scare anyone off, but at times, you know, we all have those moments where it's like, yeah, oh, this is confronting and having someone like Regina, who's there holding space and saying, okay, oh, yeah, I understand where you're at right now. And just having this dialogue is so, so, so valuable. So, um, definitely check out Regina and her work. Um, she is truly, like I said, like every time I have a conversation, I just feel like I have this, like, I just, I don't know. You just, you have this way of communicating and helping people see 
a different perspective in this really beautiful light. Um, and I think that's, that's the beauty of what you're doing with your clients. Right. So thank you. um, I appreciate that. And so, um, so I just want to end with one question and, um, that is, um, mystics revealed was your second collaborative book opportunity. Mm -hmm. I know that what, um, what was your favorite part about uh, mm. participating in this project specifically and working with Inspired Hearts Publishing? You know, I would say that it is um, the support that you provided as far as um, bringing in other members from your community who really are thought leaders in in soul wisdom and in um, soul guided business, you know, so uh, I really found a lot. I'm sorry, there's like, it, can you hear the noise that's happening? It's just a little bit of a hum. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really loud here. It's like somebody's using some power tools. Um, but you have a really, um, let me find the words that I want to use. Um, empowered circle of um, collaborators that you brought into the space that really provided, in addition to the powerful tools that you provided yourself. And, um, you know, even from day one, like, here are some tools to help you write your bio, you know, here are some tools to, um, uh, connect with each other, right? Like you, you hold this really beautiful space and bring in, in an intuitive manner, the, the people who are there to support us along the journey. And I've really, um, appreciated and learned from those people and collaborated with those people Mm -hmm. as well and connected with them. Um, I and, saw you on Bridget's podcast. Yeah. yeah. Or she was on yours. She was on yours. Maybe you were, were on both, both of okay, us. You did did a swap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. I think this is such a great way to end this because truly, um, what, um, I, what inspired hearts publishing and especially when it comes to these book collaborations is it's collaboration at the center. And, um, I, um, it's really, really important to me to bring in people to support um, this, you know, because I feel like this can be a portal of transformation for people who are showing up to share an important story to them. Um, And so bringing in people who are going to um, kind of, um, I don't want to say like make up for, but you know, there's, I don't bolster is the word that's coming to me. There you go. Bolster. Mm -hmm. Um, the things that I'm wanting to facilitate is one of that's been one of my joys in creating these containers is because it's Mm -hmm. like here, let's, you know, let's bring in Annette to do some, um, energy management or, you know, Bridget, who's going to help you land on those podcasts. Um, Mm -hmm. there's just these, um, it's the idea of feminine leadership and that we don't have to have it all, that we can yeah. create these power partnerships and know when we can stand in our power and when we can bring in another woman to stand in hers yeah. and shine. And so that's, that's, that's basically the heart of what I'm, 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 I'm doing here. So well, thank you so much for that. <laughs> well. um, I appreciate it. And um, I think we'll end it there. Um, yeah. I, it's been so fun to talk to you, Regina. And, um, so actually one last question, sure. um, how, where do you see yourself? So I know first off, like a snippet of how people can find you, how they can work with you. We'll link it up. Um, is there something that you can invite people into, um, today that are like, okay, I want to work with her. Is there an intro, yeah. something that someone can kind of start working on? Definitely. Um, a good entry point actually would be my book bundle. So you can get a signed copy of the book. Um, I do, along with that comes a handmade bookmark and a personalized message. And then also I do send a pre-recorded workshop, which is finding confidence and clarity through soul wisdom. And that includes a 30 minute um one-on-one session with me to help integrate that and just get a flavor of how we Such work a together. valuable offer. And that, what, what was the price on that? Again? $55. $55, like super value. I mean, 
it's a, it's steel literally. <laughs> and, um, I signed up for it because I love talking to Regina and Yours I is on the way through her workshop. <laughs> um, and the bookmark, I mean, all of it is it's, that is so valuable and just connect with Regina, you know, where you're at now, you're going to walk away with, a, a little bit of an understanding, if anything, from that. And she's going to give you some really great tips and um, insights on to kind of helping you maneuver in this crazy, in these crazy times we're living in. <laughs> Definitely. And I can make sure you have the link so you can post that underneath. Um, yes, do. And yeah. I think, is it the link tree? Link you can do yeah it's in the link tree as well it's okay. in there so you maybe can just, i'll just i'll post the link tree and that's going to give perfect. you all different ways um yeah. that you can connect with regina and what's awesome about it is if you find regina in the book you Page 13 can, there you go and <laughs> you come to this and you scan this it's going to give you all the connection points for Regina. So um, all of the contributors have that uh, QR code. So make sure to get the book, check it out, check them out, dig deeper. This is your guide. This is like, this is like your choose your own adventure. Literally. It is. What, yeah. What's, what's your adventure that you're going to be on? Um, <laughs> and definitely explore some of the great um, offers that they have um, going on in that book. So um, thank you so much, Regina. This is such a fun conversation as always. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and we'll definitely link up to all these great offers. And um, if anyone out there is curious about um, participating in a multi-author book, I do have a couple coming up um, that are going to be launching here in the next couple of weeks. Super excited about that. Um, but just send me a private message um, and say, hey, I'm kind of curious. So I make sure um, to uh, keep you in the know on these upcoming books. So thank you so much, everyone. And Thank we will you. be talking soon. Bye. All right. Bye.